the Ohio Harness Horsemen's Association presents Matinee Madness. Matinee Madness is presented by the Ohio State University Veterinary Medical Center in El Dorado, Sayota Downs. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Matinee Madness. I'm Frank Froz along with Susan Schroeder as we get set to kick off our fifth and final Matinee Madness of the year. Today, we are at the Crawford County Fairgrounds in Bucyrus, Ohio, as we get set. And Susan, we have 11 races today. We'll have that. 40 horses here, 22 different trainers. Of those 40 horses, Ty Bates has the most with six, and 24 different sires are represented here. And Kind of interesting, three racing hills, three long toms, and only one down by the seaside. <laughs> yeah, and it's great that so many people came to Bucyrus for today because not, not too many train here. Um, and they are, but it, it's a great track. It's a nice wide track, so everybody's happy to be here. One of the bigger county fair tracks we will see all during the year. They could score eight if they had to. Yes. And they've got a brand new barn that we're going to show everybody about. A beautiful facility that's still not ready for the horses yet, but it's getting closer. Yeah, they're hoping that it'll be ready by fair time, and it is a beautiful barn. Uh, 12 by 12 stalls, you could practically jog one in there. You probably <laughs> live in there, too, if yes, you wanted you to. Yes, you could. <laughs> Well, we are getting ready to go with the first race in just a few minutes, and we'll be back after this commercial for race one from the Bucyrus, Ohio, and Crawford County Fairgrounds. Racing is back at El Dorado Scioto Downs. Catch the excitement all summer long. Live racing every Tuesday through Saturday afternoon. First post time is 3.15. Mark your calendar to see the future stars with the $150,000 Next Generation July 4th. Two-year-old trotters and pacers begin their careers in the next generation. Horse players earn points with a new Caesars Reward Program. El Dorado Scioto Downs, live racing is back. Welcome back as we get ready for the first of 11 races today. This will be a 2.20 time bar, and we will have a double, a pace and a trot in this first race. Susan? Yep, we've got from the rail, Itty Bitty Baby, Pierce Henry is down to drive, Curtis Massey is the trainer. This is a western vintage filly out of a Jenna's Beach Boy mare, and the richest foal out of that mare is called a Perfect Dio, who has made a 128,000. This is her 11th of 12 foals, so it's a prolific mare. The two horses, Spicy Begonia, Cheryl Haynes is driver, trainer, and owner. This is an enterprise filly out of a uh, canine turbo mare. Three horses, Corn Star. Our Brad Schaefer trains, drives, and owns. This is a Caragiasso filly out of a super punk mare. And the four horse is an older horse. This horse is five, Roman Nose. His driver today is gonna be Ken Holiday. Uh, Tom Pye, our old friend from the fair circuit, is the trainer and owner. And this horse started at Bucyrus last year, but other than that, he hasn't started since 2020. So we'll see if Tom's got him ready for this matinee. And he has raced 33 times, lifetime, seven wins, six seconds, and nine thirds. Has earned just over $35,000. And Spicy Begonia is a horse we've seen already twice. Yes, she raced at, was third at Washington Courthouse and fourth at the Urbana matinee. Well, let's pick up the action in race one is right there in second, Spicy Begonia third, and now Cornstar is moving up on the outside as they move by three quarters. And now Roman Nose takes the lead, but Cornstar is trying to move from worst to first as they enter their final turn. And out with the lead, it's Roman Nose to the outside. Cornstar is trying to come up to challenge. In there next is Itty Bitty Baby. The three quarters was 136 and one. And now Itty Bitty Baby is swung wide for the drive as they move Move around the turn to the top of the stretch with the lead Roman Nose. In between them, Corn Star, Itty Bitty Baby on the grandstand side. Roman Nose, Corn Star, Itty Bitty Baby. Three across the racetrack look possibly like Itty Bitty Baby to me. Okay, race one is in the books, and you couldn't have asked for a better time bar. Time bar was 220, and this race went in 220 and one. Winner was Itty Bitty Baby with Pierce Henry up for trainer Curtis Massey and top business stable. And I do believe that some of those owners were here because there was a lot of cheering when that horse was coming down the stretch. Corn Star was second, Roman Nose was third, and Spicy Begonia finished fourth. 
and again that mile in 220 and 1. So let's go over to Frank with an interview. Thanks, Susan. Joined now by David Stats, the man who puts this whole thing together. And a lot of effort goes into putting one of these on, doesn't it, David? It's a lot of work, but I got a lot of good help. And it, you really got to have that help. But yes, it's it's quite a, a day. How many people does it take to put this on? And when do you start working to put on this matinee? Oh, I probably got a dozen people that help me behind the scenes. And I start about the month before planning for it and what I need to budget for and things like that and get a few sponsors and, and things like that. Now this Bucyrus track is one of the nicest we have in Ohio. Very wide, can score eight. Talk a little bit about the track and the history here at Bucyrus. Uh, this track can score eight and it's about one of the fewest fairs that can score eight. And of course that makes us, we have one of the Buckeye Stallion series because of that reason. Uh, the track is... I couldn't tell you how old it is. It's been here since the 1920s, uh, pre-war, and uh, it's very well maintained. We took advantage of the uh, OHHA grant last year and resurfaced it and grad it graded and made it even a little faster. That ain't the only thing you've done. You also built a new barn. We're going to yeah. talk to Tom Laughbaum Laf a little later, but yeah. that new barn is something special back there. That new barn is really nice back there, and we can't wait to have it full. And how, how many stalls are in the 19, you said? We have 19 stalls and four tax stalls and a nice bass stall. Now, believe it or not, we're closing in on fair season. It's got to be exciting to know that fairs are just around the corner. That's the nice thing about the matinee that we have here. I know, like, next week's polling. You know, this, like, leads right into fairs in the summer, and I'm just ready for it. Well, good. Well, David, I'm going to let you get back to work. Thanks for joining me, and good luck the rest of today. Yeah, thank you guys for coming. Back over to Susan. Let's take a look at race two. This is a 215 time bar pace. Number one horse is Do Ra Charger, driven and trained by Tyler Bates. This is a Mr. Wiggles two-year-old colt out of a Jenna's Beach Boy Mayor Fan Club Hanover. The best that this mare has thrown is Freddie Day Hanover. It's mark of 49 and 4 and made $334,000 plus. The number two horse is Hugh Mungus. This is the second foal out of a Western Ideal Mare. This colt is by Mr. Big. Richard Hulsapple is going to drive, and Renee Huskow is the trainer. Western BB is coming out of the three hole. Dale Edwards is trainer and driver. This is a two year old Western Vintage out of a Your Nemesis mare, Mary Celeste. This is the second foal of racing age of this mare, and she herself had a two year old record of 154. Coming out of the four hole is Lunar Beach. Pierce Henry driving for trainer Robert Brooks. This is a down by the seaside filly out of a Cam Luck mare, Winsong Grand Avenue, who herself had a three year old mark of 51 and 3 and made $266,000. So let's pick up the action in race two. Humongous is fourth of the four, so they move on to the three-quarter mile mark of the race and out with the lead, Durod Charger. Durod Charger is on top. Lunar Beach is now up into second. Western BB on the inside third. Three-quarters and 144 as they move around the final turn. Durod Charger closing in Western BB on the outside Lunar Beach. They're now coming three across the track as they move to the top of the stretch. Durod Charger. Charger does turn first. Western BB between them. The grandstand side, Lunar Beach. It's Durod Charger. Durod Charger is going to hold on. Durod Charger to win. Race number two is in the books, and the winner was Durod Charger crossing the finish line first. Second was Lunar Beach. Western BB was third, and Humongous was fourth. The winning time was 2.14 off the time bar of 215 and because the time bar was 215 they declared number two humongous the winner of the race who got to come down and get his picture taken right humongous must have been the only one that did not beat 215 so by virtue of that he is the winner of this time bar something that we haven't seen in the previous matinees that's right that's right but these judges decided that they were going to uphold these time bars um, the quarter was in 35 and 3 half 111 and 1 Three quarters, 144, and mile and 214. So that was the last quarter in 30 seconds, which was nice. And these Colts, I think, really learned a lot. They were switching places. There's uh, the lead switched places, so that was that was great. And that's what these matinees are for, to help these horses that may not train with other horses get out there and do something a little different. Yes. 
So race number two is in the books. We'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll have race number three from the Crawford County Fairgrounds after this. Athletes, they come in all shapes and sizes. They catch, they leap, they run. Some athletes even come with four legs and paws and hooves. When these beloved family members need care, remember the Ohio State Veterinary Medical Center. Ohio State experts wrote the book on exceptional animal care and know how to get our best friends back on their feet. The Ohio State Veterinary Medical Center. <laughs> Welcome back to the Crawford County Fairgrounds. Earlier today, Susan Schroeder had a chance to talk with Dale Edwards, who had a horse in the second race. Hi, we're here on the backstretch at Bucyrus, the Crawford County Fairgrounds, with Dale Edwards. Dale, how long have you been training here? 32 years. Were you, are you a Bucyrus native then? Were you always here? No, I was I stabled at Northfield for about 81 to 90, and then I moved here. My wife was from here, and then we started to have a couple kids, so that's why I moved here and been here ever since. Well, good. Is, uh, it, you said you were cutting down a little bit on numbers. How many horses do you have right now? Three. Three? That keeps you busy, though. Busy enough, yeah. I'm getting old. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who do you have in today? Western BB. Two-year-old? Two-year-old, yeah. Only, only two-year-old I got this year. Yeah. This year we only got one. And what time bar are you in? Uh, 2.15. Okay. So getting ready for the fairs coming up? Getting ready, yeah. Be ready for about Marion. Oh, okay. And Marion's pretty not far down the road? No, about the 1st of July. Great. Okay, we'll throw it back to Frank. Thanks, Susan. As we get set for the third race of our 11 today here in Bucyrus, this will be a two minute and 10 second time bar for the trot. Three horses in this race. The number one is Tommy Norse by Long Tom. Number two, Domer is by What the Hill. And number three, Jasmine Starr also by Long Tom. These are all two-year-old Colts, uh, except Jasmine Starr. She's a two-year-old filly. Tommy Norris was purchased at the Ohio Select sale for $13,000. Is owned by Norman and Susan Irene Robbins out of Republic, Ohio. The mayor um, Norse Kummer, this is her 15th foal and includes Victory is Coming, who earned over $711,000 in her career. Domer is by What the Hill out of Eden's Mardi Gras. We saw him race back at Salina where he finished fourth. He is owned by Robin McGee and Suzanne Bates. And the number three, Jasmine Starr, is owned by Sheila Hummel and Dan Reynolds. Let's pick up the action. In in race number three. Third, as they move to three quarters, and now Jasmine Starr has been sent to the outside as they move by three quarters. Norse Comer bracing for the challenge of Jasmine Starr. It's Dahmer who's losing contact in third as they move around the final turn after three quarters and 140. In and around that turn they go, and with the lead, Tommy Norse on the outside. Jasmine Starr, Jasmine Starr, and Tommy Norse. They trot as a team as they come to the top of the stretch. Inside Outside, Tommy Norse. Outside, Jasmine Starr. Dahmer is there in third. It's Tommy Norse on the inside. Jasmine Starr on the outside. Tommy Norse held on. Jasmine Starr second. Dahmer is third. Time of the mile, 210 on the nose. Tommy Norse, the $13,000 purchase at the Ohio Select Sale, the winner of the third race, right on that time bar of two minutes and 10 seconds. Yep, exactly. Hit it. I was a little worried when they got to the half in eight. I thought, well, are they going to get close to that time bar? But they were exact. So they came around. The final order of finish, Tommy Norse was your winner. Jasmine Starr finished second, and Domer finished second. Third. And the we fractions for that mile were 34 and 2, 108, 140, and 210. So the fourth race will be a 2 minute and 40 second time bar, a mile trot. The four horses in this race are number one, Stable Creek Triumph, number two, Smoldering. We've just been told we have a scratch. The number three has been scratched, so there will only be three horses. So the number four will be Dreamy Cash. 
and Stable Creek Triumph is a two-year-old triumphant caviar out of a humorous hairy mare called Stable Creek Barb. And this uh, colt, Stable Creek Triumph, is a brother to Chip So Fast, who made over $116,000. Smoldering the two horses is a two-year-old filly by What the Hill out of the Donnerail mare, Maple Gray. Maple Grove Smoky, and that is a uh, sister to a horse called Non Smoker who made over $111,000. And Dreamy Cash is a cash haul out of an infinitive mare, Sola's Dream. Chris, Chris Carl Easterday, trainer and driver. So three to go behind the gate for race number four here in Bucyrus. Let's pick up the action of the fourth race. Stable Creek Triumph is now looking to the outside second and here he comes. Stable Creek Triumph now trails three parts of a length. Smoldering is still trying to get closer. As they look into their final turn, Dreamy Cash with the lead. Stable Creek Triumph is there on the outside, 242, three quarters. And around that final turn, out there with the lead, it's still. Dreamy Cash up on the outside. Stable Creek Triumph smoldering is there in third. Moving around the turn to the top of the stretch. And on the inside, Dreamy Cash, the outside. Stable Creek Triumph. Stable Creek Triumph on the outside. Inside is Dreamy Cash. Dreamy Cash on the inside. Stable Creek Triumph on the outside. Stable Creek Triumph will come on to win. Race four is in the books, and the winner was Stable Creek Triumph. Dreamy Cash finished second. Smoldering was third. The winning time, 239 and 2, but the time bar was 240, so that means the winner is Dreamy Cash. Yeah, they must have had their uh, watches on that horse specifically because they said he went exactly in 240, so uh, put him in the winner's circle. F fractions were 41, 122, 202 and 239 and 2. As we get uh, rolling on here, four now in the books. We still have seven more races to go, and we'll be back with the fifth after this. Your animals provide unconditional love. When they hurt, you want the best care available to help them enjoy life again. The Ohio State Veterinary Medical Center is here for you and for them. From heart disease to cancer, diabetes to broken bones, and 24-hour emergency services, Ohio State's team of experts make a difference in the lives of animals and the family members who love them. The Ohio State Veterinary Medical Center. Racing is back at El Dorado Scioto Downs. Catch the excitement all summer long. Live racing every Tuesday through Saturday afternoon. First post time is 3.15. Mark your calendar to see the future stars with a $150,000 Next Generation July 4th. Two-year-old trotters and pacers begin their careers in the next generation. Horse players earn points with a new Caesars Reward Program. El Dorado Scioto Downs, live racing is back. Welcome back to the Crawford County Fairgrounds and joined now by the speed superintendent here at the fairgrounds, also the fair treasurer, Tom Laffbaum. And first, Tom, uh, just a great day for racing and to have, have this last matinee. Yeah, it's a beautiful day. It's not hot. It's nice and sunny. It's beautiful. Track's in great condition. You guys have done a great job. We, we thanked the OHHA. We, <laughs> we put some money in a couple years ago, and it's in great shape, you know. Well, I'm talking to David earlier, you know, the OHHA also a part of that new barn that you've got out there. That is a beautiful barn. Talk a little bit about the effort that went into, mm -hmm. into that barn. Well, you know, all our barns haven't had anything done to them in years. We try to keep them up, and that's about it. And finally, we got some commissioners that really care about the fairgrounds and they care about racing and we're so fortunate that they put some money into it and we're putting some money into it and it's a great facility. Now did that barn replace a barn or is it a new one? No, that we had an old barn there that we replaced and uh, there's even talk about another one next year. I, I don't know if it's just talk or not but I think they really care about harness racing and it's great. How important is it to have barns like that and new facilities on this fairground, not only for racing, but just for the whole fair? Well, yes. I mean, hopefully we're going to get some more people training here and everything, too. You know, it'll bring people in, bring some economic development here. And uh, But, yeah, the whole fairgrounds, everybody says, oh, man, you got a new barn, you know. And they, they're excited to see something new. And we're building another new building over here with some grant money. We're building a multifunctional office. It's going to be junior fair office, senior fair office, 4-H extension, and the 4-H food stand. 
grandstand all in one big building just on the other side of the grandstand so that is going to be great too so how important is agriculture in Crawford County well it's very important I mean we've got a ton of farmers and uh, and they care about the fairgrounds too you know and uh, but yeah, yeah it's a big part of this community and fair fair dates are July the 18th to the 23rd so we're all set for that pretty much? Yes, we are. We're getting ready. <laughs> all right. Well, Tom, thank you very much. We'll let you get back to work today. Thank and you. let's throw it over to Susan. Thank you, Frank. Let's take a closer look at race five. This is a 210 time bar pace. Cruising Vintage has the rail with Joshua Cochran. McChatty has a two hole with Pierce Henry. Coming out of the three hole is Do Wop Bobby with Tyler Bates. And Ken Holiday will be driving Scooter Flow from the four hole. Cruising Vintage is a two year old filly by Western Vintage out of a Yankee cruiser mare, Cruise on Ashley. And this filly is a sister to Big Bad Ashley who made $264,000. And Cruising Vintage is this mare's eighth foal. McChatty is a filly by McArdle out of a Western Terror mare, Chap Snap. And this is the second foal of racing age, but this mare had a three-year-old mark of 152 and three. Do Wop Bobby is a two-year-old colt by Racing Hill out of the Tell All mare, Deny It to the End, and Do Wop Bobby is a brother to two who paced in 54. Scooter Flow is a Lost for Words filly out of the Metropolitan mare, Scootin Metro. And this is the second foal of racing age for Scoot and Metro, and she herself made 59,000 plus. So let's pick up the action for race number five. Back stretch and Scooter Flow has her head down with the lead. Now moving up on the outside, Do Wop Bobby right there is cruising vintage from the back of the pack. Here comes McChatty and McChatty is on the move, is on the fly as they go by three quarters. Scooter Flow on the inside, McChatty on the outside, 141 three quarter speed in and around that final turn. McChatty. Past them all. Now coming on is Cruise and Vintage as they make their swing to the top of the stretch. Mick Chatty with the lead. Cruise and Vintage is up on the outside through the stretch. Mick Chatty, Cruise and Vintage on the outside. Mick Chatty and Cruise and Vintage. Cruise and Vintage got it done. Mick Chatty there for second, and uh, Scooter Flow was third. Cruise and Vintage wins race number five. Finishing second was Mick Chatty. Third was Scooter Flow. And Duop Bobby finished fourth, but Cruise and Vintage did not meet the time bar. And that means the winner is Scooter Flow, who finished third in the race, but wins the race by virtue of the hitting the time bar. You may not have been able to see Scooter Flow up the backside because she's pretty little and goes with her head really low. And I was, I was looking, the grass is a little high in the infield at this time of the year, so you couldn't see much of her. But she uh, won sure the time by. Not sure where camera angle is, if you could see, but from the track level where you and I are, you couldn't see you her. Couldn't she, see her. You, know, you said the head was low, and all of a sudden she just kind of disappeared behind the high grass out <laughs> yep. there. So. Fractions for that mile were 34 and 2, 108, 141, 29 and 2. So they came a great last quarter, 28 and 2. That was an amazing last quarter at this early. So we get ready now for the sixth. This will have a three horse field. It is a trot, the time bar of 215. The number one is Team Ed. Number two is Major Flight Risk. And number three is O George. Team Ed is trained and driven by Matthew Brown. Major Flight Risk is trained by Renee Huska and Richard Holzapple will do the driving. And the number three, O. George, trained and driven by Norman Robbins. I just uh, was going through this field and I just wanted to say, O. George. <laughs> <laughs> Wheezy on the Jeffersons used to say that all the Is time. Is that what it was? I couldn't remember where it was from, but I knew I had heard that. This, uh, the, the dam of old George is making Green Levesque. She made 123000 in her lifetime. And uh, the first horse, Team Ed, this is only the second foal of racing age. And the first foal for the mother of major flight risk, so some young mares. Some people like 
the first fold to come out. Other people you talk to just say, like, mm -hmm. I want to see what the mayor throws first before I jump in. What are, what's your yeah. philosophy, and what do you think? I don't know, because if you wait, you've got a number of years in there on that mayor before, you know, if, before you see something. So I think it's out. I mean, we're all risk takers in this business. So <laughs> just jump in and buy something. There you go. <laughs> well, let's take a look at the action from race number six. Oh, George. Oh, George is on top now by 12, 13, make it 14 lengths. Major flight risk is there in second, Team Ed third, as they move on by three quarters, and oh, George is the leader. Three quarters and 142, and around that final turn, oh, George is on top. Way back in second, major flight risk. It's Team Ed in third, as they move around the turn to the top of the lane, and oh, George is out there large and in charge of these. Further back in second, Major Flight Risk. It's Team Ed third. But by George, it's O George from start to finish. The winner of race number six was O George with Major Flight Risk finishing second and Team Ed finishing third. Final race time was 2.14, that on the time bar. So that means Major Flight Risk is actually the time bar winner. And uh, as O. George and Norman Robbins were crossing the finish line, we could see from our vantage point, we could actually see Mr. Robbins click his watch, and we figured he went, oh, George, well, he went a little too fast. Well, and if it wasn't George Jefferson, it could have been George Jetson, the other one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, his wife always said, oh, George. Oh, George. So <laughs> must just be something with that name. So yeah. six races are completed here in Bucyrus. We'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll have races seven and eight after this. Racing is back at El Dorado Scioto Downs. Catch the excitement all summer long. Live racing every Tuesday through Saturday afternoon. First post time is 3.15. Mark your calendar to see the future stars with a $150,000 next generation July 4th. Two-year-old trotters and pacers begin their careers in the next generation. Horse players earn points with a new Caesars reward program. El Dorado Scioto Downs, live racing is back. Welcome back to the Crawford County Fairgrounds. Let's head to the backstretch now where Susan Schroeder had a chance to talk to Ken Holliday. Okay, we're on the backstretch at Bucyrus with Doc Holliday. And Doc, what did you do this winter? Uh, well, I spent my winter in Lake Worth, Florida, uh, training youngsters down, racing a few at Pompano Park, and uh, just kind of mostly took it easy a little bit. Yeah. Well, that's unusual for you to take it easy. Yeah, yes, it is. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, you, you've got to have some relaxation in the game and uh, to keep your mind a little bit clear and, and, and focused on what you're doing, give you time to, to think about how things are going, what you want to, you know, what you want to do with your horses this year and uh, how they're coming along, you know, keeping a progress on them. So uh, it's very important if you can take a little time. Unfortunately, this business, there's not a lot of time. That's very true. It's a 24-7 it's kind of a business. Um, how many horses you got coming for the fairs this summer? Uh, we'll have four. We'll have uh, three two-year-olds, all Pacers, two Colts, and one Philly. And I have a three-year-old trotting Colt that's kind of aggravated me a little bit. He's a half-brother to a horse I had called Falsus Rumors, and he's just had bad feet. But he's, he's got a lot of talent, I think. But uh, So we have uh, four total. Well, that'll keep you busy this summer. Yes, it, it'll keep us busy. Uh, we'll try to hit as many as, as we can, as long as they're, you know, they're doing okay and they're healthy and all that kind of thing. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, and fairs are just a good time. Fairs are a good time. They are, and there is no lack of them here in Ohio, that's for certain, at 65 different fairs. Um, you have always been at the judges' meetings. Uh, you are always been very interested in education for judges. Can you tell us a little bit about where that comes from? Yes, uh, well, you know, um, I really want the business to keep prospering. And to do that, everybody's got to be on the same page as far as the judges, the horsemen, the racing commission, the racetracks, the whole shot. And, uh, you know, I just I just want them to understand everything, that we all got to work together to keep it going good. You, it, Right now in Ohio, our fair program, our, our racing program, our sire stakes program, obviously, and the horses that we have in this state is, is, 
is above everyone, I think, right now. we are really got something going on, and, and I just want everyone to be on the same page and, and work together and talk about things and, and, and just always have an understanding of how each other want to go, go, go places and, and do the right thing. So, uh, you know, and, and I know I get to talking sometimes, but I, it's, you know, like, and thank the fairs. They, they do a phenomenal job as well as the 4-H programs and letting us race. You know, I am, I, I am always concerned about the safety of, the, of some of the fairs uh, and uh, only because, you know, it's human lives at stake, obviously, and it's these owners put a lot of money into these horses and, and, and these are athletes, they're not machines, so we got to try to have the best possible facilities that we can. I'm, I'm not asking a lot uh, of the fairs, I just ask them that every now and then they go around their racetrack, they make sure that things aren't real close to the track that Colts are scared of, uh, they don't have no high fence, you know, the drivers have to have a escape route, I want to make sure that on the inside of the racetrack that we got a good escape route to get out of the way. Uh, and uh, all I ask is just, they don't have to do it every year, once maybe every three years, just, just grade your racetrack, make it sure it's safe, make sure there's no holes in it, make sure there ain't no big dips in it. Again, not only for the human, but you know, these horses, again, we, these are people's lives and the owners pay all these stake payments and entry fees and training bills. We just want to try to have the best facility that we can. We know everything's not going to be perfect. We understand that. But again, I, I, I just wish that uh, they would do a little bit more of that. And then maybe, I know there is some people goes around and checks the fares and stuff and, and that, but I, I wish they'd do a better job of it just to make sure before the fair time comes up that we got a nice little slate to race in. Some great advice from Doc Holliday on the backstretch at Bucyrus. Back to you, Frank. Thanks, Susan. Ken Holliday is driving in this next race. The seventh, he has the number three horse, Runaway Yankee. But from the top down, the number one is Willie the Colt. Brad Schaefer will drive as well as trains the three-year-old gelding by We Will See. The number two is Big Brutus. Terry Henry is the trainer, and 80-year-old Charles Little will be in the bike. The number three, Ken Holiday trains in drives, runaway Yankee. And the number four is She's Just Nice, Tyler Bates drives and trains. The two-year-old filly by the Panderosa, She's Just Nice, was a $20,000 purchase at the Ohio Select Sale, while runaway Yankee was a $4,500 price tag at the Buckeye Classic yearling sale. And as they say, the horses don't know how much you paid for them. So we'll see a $4,500 purchase and a $20,000 purchase in this, the seventh race. Let's pick up the action. Leader. They're in second, Willie the Colt. Runaway Yankee is there in third, and the trailer is Big Brutus. Continuing on to three quarters, and that leader, she's just nice. Over there now, second is a runaway Yankee, three quarters, 139. Willie the Colt is in third, and the trailer is Big Brutus. Pacing around the turn to the top of the stretch, she's just nice. Has made every pull a winning one, and she's just nice. Does turn with the lead. Further back in second is runaway Yankee, but it's she's just nice. She's just nice, a wrapped up winner. In there for second, runaway Yankee, Big Brutus, is third. The winner of the seventh was She's Jess Nice, finishing second, runaway Yankee, Brig, Big Brutus, was third, and Willie the Colt finished fourth, and that time the mile right on the 210 time bar. Yeah, so our track photographer, Tom Pye, only had to take one picture this time. He's been taking two pictures quite a, almost every race. And hit right on that uh, time bar of 210. The fractions were 34, 106, 139, and 210. Again, the winner, she's just nice. She was the $20,000 purchase at the Ohio Select Sale. Tyler Bates trains and drives, and he's got to be real happy after that performance. Yeah, last quarter in 31 was a, a good race. Taking a look at the eighth race, we'll have three horses in this. All of them are two-year-old Colts, but it's a double, so we'll have one pacer and two trotters. The number one is Solstice Begonia. The number two, he's top business. And number three, Gapham Gunner. 
Solstice Begonia is a racing hill colt out of the big gym mare Adriana My Love, trained and driven and owned by Air Canes. Pierce Henry will be on He's Top Business, and this is an enterprise colt out of the Muscles Yankee mare, Lindy's Top Model. And this makes him a brother to a horse called Precious Diamond, who earned $75,000. And Gapham Gunner is a long Tom colt out of the Andover Hall mare, Flake. And Flake has had 10 foals, including Pine Hall Lady, who was a $90,000 plus winner. And Carl Easterday will be driving and is the trainer for owner Chris Easterday. So this is a 2.30 time bar. It's a double. Let's pick up the action of race number eight. And you on to the three-quarter mile mark of the race. They're being led by Solstice Begonia. He's top business right there in second. Gapham Gunner is third. As they continue by three-quarters, Solstice Begonia leads them. He's top business is now losing some contact in second. The three quarters and one fifty three and three and around that final turn. Solstice Begonia. He's top business is now at his hit bed stride on the outside as they swing around the turn to the top of the stretch. Solstice Begonia the inside. He's top business on the outside. Gapham Gunner in third through the stretch at Solstice Begonia. The outside. He's top business. Solstice Begonia on the inside. He's top business on the outside. Solstice Begonia will score. He's top business there second. Gapham Gunner is third. Time of the mile 2.30. The eighth goes in order. One, two and three. Solstice Begonia was your winner. He's top business finished second and Gapham Gunner finished third. And right on that 2.30 time bar was Solstice Begonia. Driver, trainer, owner, Eric Haynes couldn't plan that any better. 2.30 exactly. 39 to the quarter, 115 to the half, 153 and 3, mile and 2.30. We head to the ninth race. This will be a time bar of 2.15 for the mile trot. The number one is Feisty Sam by Victory Sam. The number two, Knockout Hill by What the Hill. And number three, Twish by Long Tom. Feisty Sam, uh, you said is by Victory Sam out of the Feisty GG Mare, Feisty Kind of Love, and this is her fourth foal. Knockout Hill was a $15,000 purchase at the Lexington Select Sale. And Twish is out of a Cadabra Mare, I Am Spike's Wish. Well, drivers and trainers are doing double duty here. Matthew Brown trains and drives Feisty Sam. Dan Reynolds trains and drives the number three Twish. And Tyler Bates drives and trains number two Knockout Hill. Let's pick up the action for race number nine. From third as they continue on to the three quarters. And it's Knockout Hill, who is the leader. Twish is now angling to the outside from the pocket. Feisty Sam is third. As they move by three quarters, Knockout Hill leads that way. On the outside, Twish. Three quarters, 142 and two. And around this final turn, Twish on the outside now shoves a nose on top. Right there to the inside is Knockout Hill. Feisty Sam is three wide and alive for the drive. Three across the racetrack as they turn for home. Twish in between them. Feisty Sam on the outside. Knockout Hill digs in at the rail. Knockout Hill holds on to win. Twish in second. Feisty Sam third. The ninth race is in the book and Susan that was quite a race even though they did not hit the time bar at 2.15. You could just tell those young horses were out there battling trying to, to win that race. Yeah they, they really trotted nice. Uh, great great finish. The number one, or the winner of the race was the number two, Knockout Hill. Second place went to number three, Twish. And third place, Feisty Sam, the number one, ended up winning the race because it was the closest to the time bar. All three of them, though, were under the time bar of two minutes and 15 seconds. And a big crowd in the uh, winner's circle for the winner of the race, Knockout Hill and Cedar Point Beach Racing. Yeah, that Cedar Point Beach Racing is one of the fractional groups that we talk about so often and had uh, had people here watching and cheering on, so that's great. In fact, a pretty big crowd as well for Feisty Sam that was in the winner's circle as well. So nine races in the books. We've got just two more to go. We'll take a break and we'll come back with the last two races from Bucyrus, Ohio in the Crawford County Fairgrounds. 
athletes. They come in all shapes and sizes. They catch, they leap, they run. Some athletes even come with four legs and paws and hooves. When these beloved family members need care, remember the Ohio State Veterinary Medical Center. Ohio State experts wrote the book on exceptional animal care and know how to get our best friends back on their feet. The Ohio State Veterinary Medical Center. <laughs> Welcome back to the Crawford County Fairgrounds. Joined now by our track announcer today, Ayers Ratliff. And Ayers, nice day to be out here today, isn't it? I could not ask for a better day. Just beautiful weather, like mid, mid-70s, mid a nice breeze, and just, you know, could not ask for a better day. Now, you announce at some county fairs. You also announce up at Northfield Park. What do you like better, the county fairs or the paramutual track? Obviously, the county fairs um, are more fun, more laid back, but the, the track is what pays the bills and keep the lights on. What is the hardest part of your job when you're doing the announcing? Um, at the fair, the hardest part, honestly, is probably keeping the program moving along. Um, because unless you can keep the program moving, you'll never keep fans in the in in in, in the stands. And that's you know, and that's the object of the game. Um, at, you know, at Northfield, uh, the hardest part is, you know, really just probably um, the bigger races and, you know, just your nerves. And even though I've been doing this a long time, you still get nerves before the big races, which, you know, give a plug this coming Saturday, be you're there for the Battle of Lake Erie. I was just about to tell you that we got a big one coming up. Talk about some of the horses in that field. You know, I've been on vacation for almost the last two weeks, so I have not got a lot of the finalized stuff. But, I mean, I know that, uh, you know, Jimmy Frey's supposed to be there, Ocean Rock's supposed to be there. And, you know, every year we have, you know, one, two, three headliners in, in the race. This year, every horse could be a headliner in, in the field. It's just going to be a phenomenal field. And, you know, it's a nice day um, on, on back of the Belmont, so you can come early, stay late, and have great action all day and all night long. Do you put a little extra pressure on yourself on those big night races like that or the Sire Stakes Championships? You know, really, you're just much better prepared because you're. I run our social media and I do. Uh, I, I do our our press releases, and so you know so much more about those because you have put so much more work into the race just to fulfill your other parts of the job. So it's kind of you're more prepared just by proxy because you've you've done the work. Appreciate uh, you joining us for a few minutes. Now get back to work here, and we'll send it back down to Susan. Okay, thanks, Frank. We'll take a closer look at race 10. This is a 2.10 time bar, a pace. The one horse is Lucky Nugget, will be driven by Pierce Henry, trained by Robert Brooks. This is a Panda, the Panderosa filly out of Red River Hanover Mare Narcart. This is a half-sister to an $80,000 winner, Easter Bag. Judge Scooty will come from the two-hole, and Ken Holiday will drive for trainer Dan Concrete. This is a filly, a Fear the Dragon filly, out of a Ponder mare, Scooter Best. This is the third foal of racing age out of that mare, and the mare herself earned $126,000. Ken Holiday will catch the drive. The three horse is Ballard Mr. Coin. This is a three-year-old Mr. Big out of Village Connection Mayor, Hawaii Connection. Dan Collins drives, trains, and owns. And this horse has a little racing experience. Had 15 starts last year, three wins, two seconds, three thirds. Made 13989 and got a record of two, one, and three. The four horse is Monaco Hanover. Tyler Bates trains and drives. This is a two-year-old colt by Well Said out of a Camluck mare, Monte Carlo Madam. This is a half-brother to a horse called Palomar, who made 263000 and a full brother to Majoto Hanover, who made 184000 The five horse is Jens Beckham, driven by Charlie Little, trainer Cherry Henry. This is the fifth foal out of the Polo Pair Polo player mayor, excuse me, Polo Jen, and this is by Big Bam Ray. So that's the five horses, a 2-10 time bar, race 10. Let's pick up the action.
Valid Mr. Coin. Moving to the outside now, coming on is Monaco Hanover. Monaco Hanover taking a crack at the lead as they move by three quarters. And they report there in 139 around this final turn, the leader, Ballad Mr. Coin. On the outside, Monaco Hanover. It is Judge Scooty in third on the inside, fourth, Luggy Nugget as they come to the top of the stretch. Ballad Mr. Coin on the inside. Outside, Monaco Hanover. Hanover trying to roll from the back is Judge Scooty. Judge Scooty on the outside. Monaco Hanover ballad Mr. Coin. Monaco Hanover held on to win. That 10th race was another great race as they battled down to the line with the winner being Monaco Hanover. Second place went to Ballard Mr. Coin. Judge Scooty was third. Lucky Nugget finished fourth and finishing fifth was Jens Beckham. 2.09 was the final time, but with the 2.10 time bar and all four of them crossing the line very quickly, it's going to be the fifth place horse, Jens Beckham, who's going to get the win. That's right. It's uh, Sometimes it pays to be in back of the field, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but no, that was a, another one of those good races that these young horses, except Bell and Mr. Coyne does have 15 lifetime starts with three wins and has earned almost $14,000 in his career last year. Uh, went out, finished second, but you know, for Monaco, Hanover and Tyler Bates have to be happy about uh, the way he raced. Yeah, last quarter and 30 seconds flat, so fractions of the mile were 35, 107 and 2, 139 and 209, so a great finish. So we are now set for our final race of the afternoon. This will be a double with a time bar of 2.05, the fastest time bar we have had today. The number one is Fear the Lou, number two, Romeo's Dream, number three, Miss Hilfiger, and number four, Gator at the Well, a pair of two-year-olds and a pair of three-year-olds. Mm -hmm. And Fear the Lou will be driven by Pierce Henry. Robert Brooks is the trainer of this Fear the Dragon Colt out of an American Ideal Mare Jetta Blue Chip. This is her third foal and her second Fear the Dragon. Romeo's Dream out of the two hole, Norman Robbins will drive, also trains and owns. Uh, this was a $6,500 purchase at the Blooded Horse Sale. It's out of, or it's by, I'm sorry, His Highness out of a Prague mare, Unreal Classy, and she has had seven foals. Miss Hilfinger and Terry Henry will race from the three hole. Terry is also the trainer, and as uh, Frank mentioned, this is a three year old by Racing Hill out of a DreamWork mare, Designer Dreams, and this is only the second foal of racing age of this mare. Gator at the Well. And Mary Burkhold is this is the most experienced horse in the field, has had 12 starts as a two year old, made $7,700. So this horse raced at Pompano Park last. And looking still, though, for that first victory right. um, 12 lifetime starts, a second, and a third. So let's and pick this, up the. This, oh, go ahead. Oh, this is a double gated race, and we decided we're not going to try and figure <laughs> out who's trotting and who's pacing because. We saw a down by the seaside trotter at Washington Courthouse, so all bets are off. <laughs> exactly. Once you see that, throw it out the window. <laughs> right. So try to figure it out yourself. Two yep. trotters, two pacers, three and one maybe, we don't know. But uh, but uh, here we go with the uh, 11th and final race from Bucyrus. The Lou remains the leader. Romeo's Dream in second. Ms. Hill figure is third with Gator at the well as they pace to three quarters. Fear the Lou, the leader. They're in second. Romeo's Dream trying to fire from second. Three quarters and 137. Moving around the final turn. Now Romeo's Dream is trying to strike from the pocket here as they move to the top of the stretch. Fear the Lou on the inside. Romeo's Dream on the outside. Fear the the Lou digs in. Romeo's dream on the outside second. Fear the Lou. Fear the Lou. Impressive today. Romeo's dream in second. Miss Hilfiger third. The 11th race is in the books, and the winner was Fear the Lou, and second was the only trotter in the race, Romeo's Dream, and you really liked that two-year-old trotter. I did. I mean, that was an impressive race against not only the other two-year-old pacer, but two three-year-old pacers in there, and that little Romeo's Dream trotted up a storm. They, I'm going to give you the fractions, 32-1, and one, 
105 and 2, 137 and 2, 5 and 3. And with my calculations, that's the last quarter in 28 and 3. And that little trotter was really stepping it down the stretch. So it was Fear the Lou first, Romeo's Dream finished second, Miss Hilfiger finished third, and Gator at the Well finished fourth. So this wraps up our matinee season, and we got the fair starting next week. Next week already, that's... A little bit scary. <laughs> All of a sudden, it looks like summer is here. Yes. Yep. This was a beautiful day here at Bucyrus. So looking forward to... Re I bet everybody's looking forward to racing for a little money now. Exactly. This was just to see what uh, your your horses could do. And mm -hmm. uh, next time they hit the track... Uh, at a county fair, it's going to be for the real thing. Yeah, money so. on the line. Well, that'll wrap it up from uh, the Crawford County Fairgrounds. We'd like to thank uh, David Stats, Tom Laughbaum, and everyone at the Crawford County Fairgrounds for welcoming us out here. It was a great day of racing. We also want to thank our sponsors who have helped make Matinee Madness uh, a go this year, and that is El Dorado, Sciota Downs, and the Ohio State Veterinary Medical Center. Make sure you join us this coming Thursday for another edition of Freshman Focus as we will have trainers Charlie Myrick and Corey Day Airman. And next Monday, we kick off Ohio County Fair Racing as we will be in Paulding for the Paulding County Fair. For Matt Clark, Susan Schroeder, I'm Frank Fraz. We hope to see you at a fair real soon this summer. Goodbye, everybody. This has been Matinee Madness. Matinee Madness is presented by the Ohio State University Veterinary Medical Center and El Dorado Sayota Downs. Matinee Madness is a presentation of the Ohio Harness Horsemen's Association.